Hi, I'm Semen Yaakov. This presentation is entitled So What is Gun MOSFETs Reverse Conduction All About? We have now a number of different types of uh, switch elements, power switches. Here I'm showing a silicon MOSFET, IGBT, and also a gun MOSFET that we are going to talk about. Now the silicon MOSFET has an intrinsic diode built in in the element. So this device can conduct both ways. When the gate to source is turned on, then it will be conducting in the forward direction. And if the voltage is reversed and the current go this way, then the diode can conduct. IGBT does not have an intrinsic diode. However, in most applications, we do connect the so-called anti-parallel diode. And the reason is that we need to have a reverse current. The IGBT does not conduct the reverse current, being a BJT device and the reason for the need uh, will be discussed later on. Now, gun MOSFET does not have an intrinsic diode within the element itself, and the subject matter of this presentation is to see what is the mechanism of reverse conduction in the gun MOSFET and what can we expect, and the question is also, do we need an anti-parallel diode? Now, let's have a look now at a say a synchronous buck converter just to understand why do we need reverse conduction. So here we have a buck converter. This situation is when the upper side, the upper transistor is conducting, carrying it going this way through the device. Now when we turn it off we have to keep still the lower device off in order to avoid a shoot through. And while we have this dead time, that is both transistor are off, current will actually flow through the diode. So we do need a reverse conduction. Now for the MOSFET, when we turn it on, it will conduct both way through the channel with an RDS on. And we would like to turn it on in order to reduce the voltage drop. But during the dead time, we do need a path. So we do need a diode or something else that will carry the current in the reverse di direction while this transistor is off, otherwise we might have a shoot through. So this is the reason why we do need reverse conduction. Now let me say something about the two types of MOSFETs that we have. Most popular is the so-called E-mode or enhancement mode. And in this case, I'm talking about N channel, in this case, the transistor will be off with VGS equal to zero. That's this point. And as we move to the threshold, this is about the threshold, conduction will start. And so normally the transistor is off. Now, in the case of a depletion mode, which is shown here schematically, the situation is such that when VGS is zero, the device is conducting. And in order to put it in the off state, we do have to provide a negative voltage. And this is again for an channel, say MOSFET. And um, therefore it is sort of normally on and you need a negative voltage to turn it on. So now let's have a look at the VI characteristic of a silicon MOSFET, the full characteristic, the four Chondrant. We have here, first of all, a situation I'm showing here, VGS is smaller than the threshold. In the forward direction, there is no current, no matter what is VDS. On the other hand, as VGS moves up above threshold, conduction starts, and of course uh, the current that you'll get may depend on the magnitude of VGS. The higher the VGS, the higher will be uh, the current that you can get. But we do work here. This is the area that we are working in the switching mode. And this is in fact, this slope is the RDS on. Now what happens with the reverse direction, the, four, the third quadrant? In this case, we have a mirror, in fact, of the situation here. That is, 
if the VGS is above threshold, we have conduction, same way, same RDS or no, approximately the same. So this is sort of symmetrical both ways. But what happens if VGS is smaller than the threshold? Now, there is no forward conduction because if VGS is lower than threshold, there is no current here. But the reverse is still conducting through the diode, but you have to first of all pass through the breakpoint, so to speak, of the diode, that is the, uh, where the diode starts to conduct, depending on the diode, and usually the MOSFET diode, say the silicon MOSFET diode, will have a uh, voltage, uh, something like uh, between, say, 0.7 and 1 volt, uh, a little bit above it, and then it'll start conducting like a regular diode. So this is uh, a silicon MOSFET enhancement mode, uh, typical operation. Now, what happens when we have a reverse conduction? Well, in the case of the silicon MOSFET with a diode, through reverse conduction, we are going to have a negative voltage across the device. This is the current, this is plus, this is minus. So across the device, we have minus here with respect to ground. So therefore, there is a voltage drop. This is the voltage on the diode. And of course, it's going to be some losses associated with the fact that there is a current through the diode and a voltage drop on the diode. Now, let's have a look now a little bit closer to the mechanism of reverse conduction in a MOSFET. And I'm shooting toward uh, gallium nitride, which does not have a diode across it, okay? So here I'm showing in a very simple way the transistor. This is the channel. There is an insulation here, oxide. This is the gate, source, and drain. Now normally we impose a voltage between source and gate. This is drain, it will be positive for N channel, positive. This will be negative, here positive, negative. We impose a voltage here and we cause, uh, we enable carriers to go or to pass through the channel. However, if VGS is zero, VGS is zero, no voltage here, and we reverse the polarity, put here plus and here minus, here we have another sort of gate between gate and drain, and this voltage then can actually control the current through the channel. So we have sort of a reverse a MOSFET and the controlling now, or controlling voltage is gate to drain. To understand it better, let's have a look now at the voltages here, which is a little bit confusing, but let's sort of uh, try to decipher it here. Now, starting with Kirchhoff, from here, going all the way from the voltage, summing up the voltages, I have VGD minus VGS plus VDS is zero, from which I get the value of VGD as a function of these, okay? This is actually the difference between these. And VDS, VDS as a function of VGS and VGD. Now suppose VGS is below threshold that it, it is not controlling the device. It's not controlling it. And I'm imposing a negative voltage. If, when imposing this negative voltage, that is here it'll be plus and here it'll be minus, so therefore, and VGS uh, is here. So as we make this voltage more and more positive, this will increase VGD eventually it will reach the threshold. And therefore, at this point, we start ha we'll have conduction in the reverse direction, or conduction is possible in the re reverse direction, for this voltage, that is VDS, reverse direction, will reach a point in which we are imposing a threshold voltage on VGD, and beyond it, if this voltage, the source, becomes more and more positive toward the drain, then of course conduction will be uh, 
it's like any other MOSFET that has a voltage higher than the threshold. So what is really happening here is that a reverse voltage imposes a positive voltage on VGD and if this VGS is below threshold then this becomes the controlling voltage. Let's take some examples in order sort of to feel it more intuitively. Let's assume the following, it's like case number one. Threshold is 5 volt. This is an enhancement mode MOSFET, threshold at 5 volt. VGS is zero, there's zero here. And I'm imposing a minus four volt. So here it's plus, here is minus. Therefore, VGD, this is zero, this is four volt, VGD is four volt. Four volt is below the threshold. So in this case, with this voltage here, four volt, reverse voltage, the device is not contacting. If, however, I impose a 5 volt here, this is still 0, threshold is 5, VGD now becomes 5, this is equal to this, so we are on the verge of conduction, we are at the threshold. And obviously, if I impose a voltage of 6 volt here, 6 volt, this is still assumed to be zero, we'll have 6 volt here, so therefore there will be full conduction of this device in the reverse direction. So I'm assuming of course the thresholds are the same. So we can see that uh, for different situations we are going to have reverse conduction, but the voltage drop on the device is not very low, it really depends on the situation, and of course it depends on also uh, VGS because we have here that the voltage here of the device is a function of VGS too. Now I've considered a enhancement mode, an E mode, in which the voltages VGS and VGD are positive and here's the threshold. So what about the case of a depletion mode, a D mode? In this case uh, there is conduction at VGS zero and no, no conduction at uh, voltages which are uh, more negative. Now the equations are the same, only the values are different. So here is just one example. Suppose the threshold is minus 6 volt, that is the threshold is somewhere here. And let's assume that VGS is minus 8 volt, that is we are somewhere here so that VGS is not controlling the channel. And let's assume that we have a VDS of minus two volt. Here it is. So in this situation, we'll find that we are, we have the difference here is, is minus six volts. So we are at VGD of minus six volt, which is the threshold of the device. Okay, so we are here as far as this is not VGS now, it's VGD. So in this situation, although the numbers are negative, but it's the same principle of course, uh, in this situation we're going to have a voltage drop depending on VGS and of course on the threshold. And here we can see a real uh, VI curve of a real transistor, it's a uh, gun MOSFET depletion mode made by VISIC technologies and here we see the forward conduction this is the normal we are more familiar with it being a depletion mode then at zero it's conduct very well and then as you go negative with VGS the conduction goes down eventually minus six volt approximately it'll be zero now what happens in the reverse direction? Again, if you have VGS equal to zero, it is just as a mirror image here, the same thing, same RDS, RDS on in the reverse direction. But if VGS is negative, for example, if VGS is minus eight volt, meaning that 
the gate to source terminals do not control the channel. It is sort of off in terms of the regular operation. Then you'll see that the, there is a voltage drop until you get to the threshold in the reverse direction and this will be when VD or VDS is minus 2 volt. So this is what we see here when uh, VDS is minus 2 volts plus here and minus here threshold is minus 6 volt VGS is minus 8 volt then we are at the threshold exactly and this is what we see here minus 8 volt VGS and uh, we see that we are at the threshold at VDS minus 2 volt obviously when VGS will be more negative like minus 10 volt we're going to have a larger voltage drop in the reverse that is only until it'll actually breaking point in here somewhere uh, only then the device will start conducting so the question is okay so there is a reverse regression is there any problem with it it does it harm the operation in any way well in a way it is changing the operation and but as it turns out the effect is not very large as we'll see in a minute so let's first of all examine what is happening we're going to have the time as we turn off the upper transistor until we turn on the lower transistor and then as we turn off the lower transistor until we turn on the upper transistor okay these transistors so in this case we're going to have a current through the channel the reverse current here it is and then a reverse current here so this will be typically the uh, shape of the voltage this is I didn't write it this is VDS okay this is VDS so the question is well it looks uh, bad here but uh, it, the question of course is what is the voltage here and the proportion and the time so let's do a simple calculation here let's assume that we have, let's talk about one of these here we have at that time and so the energy that we're going to lose here is of course the current times the voltage times the dead time and then if you multiply it by frequency this is the power now I can sort of uh, quantize it and make it proportional or uh, find out how does it relate to the actual power going through the device if this is the buck converter then the power will be the duty cycle time V bus times the current so here we have current which is sort of dropping out now I'll multiply it by 2 because we have two incidents like this two dead times and for a specific case 15 volt reverse voltage 100 nanosecond of a dead time duty cycle 0.5 and V bus of 400 volt and switching frequency 100 kilohertz I find that the power loss the relative power loss due to this reverse conduction to the actual power that goes through the device is only 0.075 percent and this is because of course the dead time is very short now obviously as you go up with frequency if this would have been one megahertz then you'll have 0.75 but uh, practically in normal operation of today limited by the magnetics uh, that we have uh, frequency limitation of magnetics this uh, loss is not very much we can put a dial across the device and this will of course lower this it will bring it down from 15 volt to say 1 volt but then uh, the losses will be lower but then we might have some other phenomena associated with uh, dial so I'm not going into it now and uh, the fact that the loss as it is now is fairly low makes actually uh, the diode unnecessary not to mention the fact that you like to put here a silicon carbide diode which is expensive and probably it costs just about as the transistor itself so the fact that you don't need a diode uh, really lower the cost of the system so this brings me to the end of this presentation I thank you very much for your attention I hope you found it interesting and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future
Thank you very much.